Different people mean different things. In some cases, it's about the economics of a supply chain. Are the people at the bottom of the supply chain those perceived to be the most vulnerable, receiving fair value for their products? So is, is this a fair price? And so there's an economic component to a responsible supply chain. And clearly, uh, that's something that's difficult as weather and other things conspire to raise or lower yields and exchange rates between currencies. But there's an economic element to responsible supply chain. There is then the behavior of the individual farmer. Are they using practices, leaving strips of grass between their crops and, and a stream? The way in which they handle their pesticides, the amount of fertilization. Are they putting too much on at once and it's leaching into the groundwater? And so you can walk from each step. There are others for whom the whole issue around genetically modified organisms is an important thing, and they would consider a supply chain that includes that technology would not be responsible. And so there are some forks in the road where you have to, to talk about it differently for different consumer audiences. But it's essentially a mapping of the entire process of capturing photosynthesis and turning it into dinner. And you can take each one of those steps. How are the people paid in the factory that processes it? How are they treated? The quality of the locker room, the lunch room, and you can, you can go on and on. Then the wastewater that's involved, um, the air quality from the boiler. And so I think people use that word as almost a throwaway, but supply chains are not complicated. They're just extensive, and you can map each and every piece of it. And because we participate in so many, we get to influence responsible behavior in a lot of those links. It's a good news, bad news story for Cargill. The good news is we can make a dent in it in a lot of different segments along that journey from the field to the table. The most typical way since, again, we're neither a government nor a, a police force is, is through information and training. So take best practices and, and go to those places that, that can benefit from improved technology. That's probably the most pervasive. Teach a person how to manage the waste out of a livestock operation and show them what we've done with other people. I think beyond that, <clears throat> there are opportunities in conjunction with individual groups of customers to select groups of farmers and to work more intensively with them and do what we call identity preservation. And so we make an arrangement with a producer. He agrees to behave in a certain manner in, turn, in return for an enhanced payment for his crop. We segregate that and take it through the process and pass it to a consumer packaged goods company who then makes that promise to their consumers. So I describe it as story food, but not a bad story, actually a very good story. And so the food arrives at the consumer with a provable story that it's been more responsibly done. And so you do that over and over, thousands of times in hundreds of different crops, and you slowly begin to make a dent because pretty soon the neighbors see that Someone else is following good practices and, and thriving, and you get emulation, and it just grows and grows.